415, the melting point of H2O solid is 0 degrees Celsius. Would you expect the melting point of H2S solid to be negative 85 degrees Celsius, 0 degrees Celsius, or 185 degrees Celsius? And then explain your answer. All right. So whenever they're talking about melting points and the difference between melting points, whether one molecule is going to be higher melting point or lower, just know that melting points and boiling points are very, very close related between the intermolecular forces that these molecules have. So down here, there are three total intermolecular forces that uh, covalent molecules might have, depending on what molecule you have. And the more that you collect, the higher the boiling point, so increasing boiling point and increasing melting point. So let's just see what these uh, molecules have in terms of intermolecular forces. So I have H2O. Now it doesn't really matter if it's a solid or not because a Lewis structure is a Lewis structure. So I'm just gonna say, okay, I have H2O and then I have H2S. Let's first draw out the Lewis structure. So pause the video if you need to, but this will kind of be like a review, uh, a quick review, right, as to how to draw Lewis structures. Just know that there's tons of, of videos on the channel that go distinctly into how to draw a Lewis structure. So if you do need more help, you could always check out those videos. Um, so let's see, does your uh, Lewis structure match mine? For H2O, you have an oxygen in the middle surrounded by the two hydrogens and you got two lone pairs of electrons for the oxygen. Same idea for sulfur, for H2S. You have a sulfur in the middle, surrounded by your two hydrogens, and you have a lone pair for the sulfur. All right, so now let's figure out what types of intermolecular forces these have. Well, we go from the most basic all the way down to the most specific. Now, dispersion forces, which are also known as London forces or Van der Waals forces, I guess it just depends on what your teacher or professor say they are, but just know that these, all compounds and all molecules have this force. So this is always like a gimme force. So it doesn't matter what you are. H2O is going to have dispersion forces. So it will have a dispersion force. And H2S has a dispersion force. Okay, so now we go to the next one. Dipole-dipole attractions, or dipole-dipole force. But this force is only for polar covalent molecules. And now, I will give you a little trick as to how to quickly identify a, a polar covalent molecule. Just know that your molecule will be polar if your center atom, or your central atom, has lone electrons. And when I mean lone electrons, I mean those dots. So anytime that you see that your center atom has lone electrons or dots, I don't care what the rest of the compound looks like, it's automatically a polar molecule, which means that it's asymmetrical. So in this case, I have an oxygen that has two lone pairs in the center. Oxygen is the center atom. It's got lone electrons, it's got those dots, so this will definitely have dipole-dipole attraction or dipole-dipole force. This would be classified as a polar molecule. Now, let's just look at the sulfur one. I look in the center atom, and sure enough, these have lone electrons as well. So I don't have to look anywhere else. This totally would have a dipole-dipole because the whole molecule would be classified as polar. So nothing different between the two atoms that I see thus far. Let's go to the next uh, intermolecular force, which is the hydrogen bond. Now this is the most specific because you're only in a very, very special club here. You have to have a hydrogen and it has to be bound to one of the three most electronegative elements on the periodic table, which would be nitrogen. So you have to have an H uh, HN bond, or an HO bond, or an HF bond. Or you could have an NH, OH, or FH. You could be, you know, irreversible, um, you know, flip them. So now if I come to 
H2O, do I see one of those bonds? And yes, I do. I have an H that's bound to an oxygen. That's this one. So right off the bat, I can hydrogen bond, and that is one other hydrogen bond. But now if I look at H2S, well, uh, yeah, I have a hydrogen, but it's not bound to one of those three special elements. It's bound to a sulfur. So this one has no hydrogen bond. That's the difference. So now from there, we can determine what's going to happen to that melting point. Remember, as you collect them all, you got to collect them all. Or what is it? Got to catch them all. Um, you're increasing your boiling point on your melting point. So since this one has three intermolecular forces, right? It's got dispersion, dipole, and hydrogen bonding. This one should have a higher boiling point, and specifically in this question, since they're talking about the melting point, this one should have a higher melting point. Okay. This one, since you only have two intermolecular forces, this one results in a lower melting point. So now let's see. Now if they did tell us that the melting point for water was zero degrees Celsius, and this has to be the higher of the two, we now have a choice. Is it gonna be negative 85, zero, or 185? Well, it's definitely not gonna be zero because it's not the same. It's gotta be lower than zero. So we just need a number that's lower than zero degrees Celsius because that's our reference value. So in this case, the melting point for H2S would be the negative 85 degrees Celsius. And that is the final answer. Now they do say, um, you know, explain why, but everything that we just went through is the explanation. So as because since H2S does not have hydrogen bonding and has two intermolecular forces, that melting point should be lower than water. And that is the end of this question. I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. And if you wouldn't mind helping us out, please hit the subscribe button. Um, we're just trying to make an impact out there in the YouTube universe that this channel exists. Thank you so much for all your support, your kind comments thus far. Let's keep this journey going. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.